go a step forwards with the loop grid we created yesterday with the food and menu type that we did over here. What if you wanted to create a hero banner? So the idea is, is that is like, every, let's say every day you add in a new post type for food with a new menu item. Every day, your hero banner is dynamically going to change to show the latest item. Yes, it's a loop grid, but it's inside your hero banner. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's go and reuse this loop grid that we already built. And like I said, if you haven't watched a previous video and you want to learn how to build this from scratch, you can go and watch that. It doesn't take too long. It's using some custom fields to get these custom fields in. It's a loop grid. And in fact, the edit, the template, if I just quickly show it to you, this is very simply just a parent container. Inside of that container, we have a child container, which is the card with all of our items inside of there, the custom field. And then we have an image which sits inside the parent container, which is how we've got it overlapping like that. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to pick this up. OK, this entire loop grid like that. OK, in fact, we don't even have to pick it up because we're just going to reuse it within this hero banner. So let's go and set up our hero banner. This hero banner is going to be a boxed width of 1140 like that. In the advanced tab, I'm going to say just give me 100 on the top, give me 20 on the right, 100 on the bottom and 20 on the left. I'm only doing this really simple. You might not use padding. You might have gone in and set your minimum height with, say, 50 VH or 70 VH if it was going to be 70 percent. So what we have at the moment is inside of here a container with a loop grid. Into this container, I'm going to drop in another container and I'm just now just going to duplicate that. So now inside our parent container, we have two child containers. Child container one is going to contain our impact headline, maybe a subheader and a button. Child container two is going to contain the loop grid and another image. The first thing I'm going to do is go and pick up my loop grid. I might just copy it and I'm going to go over here and paste it into my second child container like that. Then I'm going to get rid of it from here. OK, so we got child container one, child container two. In the parent container, I am now going to set this to be a row like that. Um, and I'm just going to set my gap between my containers to be zero. In fact, let me just do it to the same over here, set them all to be zero. Why are my gap containers in column and row set to 50? I think it's because I was doing another tutorial and I haven't reset it from my site editing. So please excuse that, okay? So we have container one and we have container two. Now at the moment, the loop grid is looking pretty awful. So let's go and modify that. I'm going to go over to my query and I'm going to actually set this to be leave it as date descending. So the idea is that it will always show you the latest two. So our hero banner is going to keep updating. Isn't that a really cool way of keeping it fresh? We're going to have an image, but the latest two food type post items we create will appear there always. So your hero banner is dynamically changing every time you add in a new post type. I actually prefer the hot bolty one being at the start because of the look of the images. So I'm just going to set it to ascending for now. Don't forget, you could go and include, exclude items, categories, whatever you want. Right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's go back over to our layout. And I'm going to set this to be two columns and only show me two items like that. Well, that is all I'm going to show at the moment. Child container number one, I'm going to set it to be a full width. But I am going to say I only want this to be about 40% of the width. And child container two set to be full width. The full width is inside of the parent container. So you're saying we, we're, we're assessing the entire estate, but the first container is 40% and the second one will be 60% like that. So just to, just to recap, child container one is definitely 40%. Child container two is 60% because even though I've got these items here, I don't want them to be all the way over to the right hand side. I want to add in a bit of gap. So I'm going to go to my loop grid. And I'm going to just uh, shrink down the gap between them to be about 20, I think, works well. Go to the Advanced tab, and I'm now going to give this some right margin. I go with 80. Now, the word, the title does wrap. Now, I'm not overly worried about that because the wording there still looks OK for what I'm trying to achieve. So let's go and drop in an image that's actually going to sit behind these. The first thing I'm going to do is go to my child container, and I'm going to say justify everything to be at the bottom. 
Then into my child container number two, I'm going to drop in an image and I'm going to ensure that this is actually sat uh, above the loop grid because obviously I want the loop grid items to overlap it. I'm now going to set this to be a full and go and pick my image, which will be this one over here. Um, I don't think I need to do it yet. That's all we do. Go to my style for the image and I'm going to give this a border radius of 20 as well. And you might want to replicate the box shadow that you had before. So it's a good idea to make a record over any values you did add in. And I did give it about two, I think, over there. And we drop that to about five or four. So we get a shadow effect over there, but my loop grid items have now disappeared off the screen. Let me now just go to my image for a moment. I'm going to set this to be 100% within the estate of what we have over here, but I am going to add in some breathing space. So I'm going to say, give me about 60 like that from the left and give me 60 from the bottom as well. Now that I've done, now that I've added in my margin, and now I'm going to adjust the size of it. So now I'm going to actually shrink it down to be something like 75 instead. Um, why have I done that? Because once you start to add in, look, the, the best way to build is you add in your content. You get it stylized it to look how you want. Then you adjust your margin and padding. And then you might now tinker with it a little bit more to get it right. It's okay for a little bit of trial and error. So we're going to go to the alignment and I'm just going to do that. So it's moved it over. It's all still sat within the 60% of the 1,100 estate. The loop grid though is way below. Look, so what I need to do now is get it to overlap. You could, if you want, click the loop grid and do something like this. You know, you could sit there and do that. Just, you know, negative, negative, negative and bring it all the way over. Or you could just go over to position, hit absolute. So now it is within that container absoluted to the top. I could stick it on the right, but I'm not going to because I've already got some 60 uh, pixel margin over there. Actually, there it is on the right hand side. But I'm going to position it to be at the bottom below like that. So within container number two, this is what we get. Now, it's not looking too good in my opinion. So we're going to go to child container number two, and we're going to go and add in a little bit of height. It starts to shrink down. My content was justified to the bottom there, uh, but I've now justified it to be back at the top there, just so the image sits in the right place. And now I'm just going to adjust it. Now, the image I've got there is probably not the best one because you can't really see what she was doing now because it's slightly overlapping. But if you had the right kind of image, what you will get is that kind of, I and mean, we'll go with 600 because um, that makes pretty much sense there. I think that's a really neat, clever idea. Now over here, well, we're just going to go and drop in a heading and another heading and a button. So I've gone and added in my text. And you, as you can see, I've already gone and given it a color. It's got a three REM and a 600 semi bold uh, weighting. My subheader has got a bit more text. It's a little bit bigger. I might make it be a 1.7, give it a bit of uh, spacing there for the wording as well. The, the letter spacing looks a bit close there. Um, that's only a 1.7. I might drop that down to 1.6. Well, 1.6 looks better. 300 light. You could go with a four as well, but it depends on what kind of look you want to go for. You know, very clean looking at the moment. And then we got our button over here. Let's just give this a background color. Not going to have too much orange. Mistake some people make is they because their accent color is a certain color. The headline is that color. The button is that color, and the color is everywhere. So you don't want to overdo it too much. Uh, I am going to make this button be a little bit more spaced out. So I'm going to give this about 15 just to move it down a bit. You may feel though that by having the white, you you still want to see a bit of the background. Well, okay, let's just hit update for a moment. We go to edit template. Let's go to child container. Two. Uh, well, not child container two. It's the child container inside the loop grid. I'm going to go to my style where I have my background. And I'm now just going to shrink that down a little bit like that. So you can still see the wording, but you can just about see her as well. So we're going to update that. And I've gone and added in a bit of another heading at the top there with revolutionize your kitchen just so it was squared off with the image because I had a bit of a change of mind there. And I've just added in about, well, there's about 40 and 40 over there. So we got nice spacing out. So as a hero banner, you know, imagine like that's at your top now. You've got your logo and your menu maybe over here and then you've got further items below. 
but you're kind of giving them something to go and click. And look, if I click this, and by the way, I don't recommend clicking this, right? Because I have not set single post template, but that would be, that would take them over. So it might be you're showcasing a product, maybe. You know, you got a picture of someone running and then you got uh, an image of the trainers or what they're working out with. That's all good and fine. How does it look on the mobile? Really important you do check this out. Obviously, you're going to go in and modify your sizing. Problem area comes, though, when you get to uh, child container number two. So we have our image. We're going to obviously get rid of uh, the, um, <laughs> I can't even say the words now, the margin at the top and bottom there. I'm going to set it to be 100% for the mobile. Um, we're going to ensure, yeah, the image will just be centered anyway. But it's then what do we do with uh, the loop grid? Because the loop grid at the moment is set to be an absolute. And this is where using absolutes can be a pain, um, especially with how it starts to position it. And, and this is where using something like uh, a negative top margin works out better for you. Because if on the desktop you said minus 200, you would now just zero it out. And what I'm going to do is just offset it. So I'm just going to go, and go down and I'm now going to bring it down. But this is where sometimes, in my opinion, it's better to use a top margin because, like I said, you can control it. We just got to make sure that for the loop grid, we've zeroed out any margin and padding, which we have done. You could still have that overlapping. If, you know, to be honest, you could have it overlapping. There's no harm in that, just the top of it. I think when you get to the mobile, having that does start to look a little bit better. And obviously, when you go back to your desktop, it still looks like that. So that was, I think, a pretty funky looking hero banner using a bit of loop grid to make it much more dynamic. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squad, and I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon.